So in general, if you're going to have a lot of screencast videos or other videos in your Moodle site, it's best to go ahead and have them placed on some form of a streaming server. In this video, I'm going to show you how to upload videos to Moodle. I'm bleh, to YouTube in order to then put links in Moodle. So first you'll go to YouTube and if you do not have a Google account, you'll need one in order to create a YouTube account. And once you have a YouTube account, then, you know, all sorts of videos will show up that, you know, they think you're going to want to watch. Uh, but you just at this point want to upload a video and you come over here to this little plus video camera, upload video. When it's ready to have you upload a video. It is a drag and drop scenario here. So that's pretty straightforward. You'll come out to, you know, to your desktop or wherever and get something to drag. You could also click the select file button and then you just get to choose. Your video has to have a title. Uh, I'm going to suggest that you go ahead and give it a brief description of some sort or another. Uh, that will assist in the viewer knowing what it is that they're getting into. Now obviously for your course you're going to have a description in the Moodle site also, so that may not be um, important right here. While the video itself is processing, you can work your way through these settings. Do you want a, just a, some other kind of picture to be the thumbnail? I ignore that. Do you want this to be part of a playlist? might make sense. Make it part of a playlist that um, has the name of your course site. And in that case, I just click that. If I needed a new one, I would click New Playlist. Um, I actually don't. I already have a playlist called Moodle, which is uh, the topic area that this video is. And I say Done. All right, this is important. This has to do with new laws about video stuff and YouTube and all of that. You have to determine if the video is made for kids or not. Go ahead and say no, it's not made for kids. It just solves all sorts of problems. And then now we just wait for the video to process, which can take a while. If you've kept your video to 10 minutes or so, this will not take as long as, uh, you know, it might for a much longer video. Uh, but still, um, this roughly 11 minute video that I have chosen to upload here is going to take another for probably two minutes to finish processing. So we'll pause while that happens. And I'm back. In the end, this video took a about five minutes or so to process. Just be patient. Um, it has finished uploading and processing. A link has been created, but there's a few more settings for us to do. We're going to click Next, uh, in screen, cards, whatever. Just ignore that. Now, here's where you need to think about this. Do you want to publish it now or schedule a date and time? I think you're probably going to want to just publish it now. So you click on that. Here's where you have to make a decision. If your screencast video is something that you are perfectly happy with the idea of anybody anywhere seeing it, go ahead and just mark it as public. If you prefer for only your students to see it, uh, but don't want to go through the process of the full private um, setting, you can set it as unlisted, which means it's still available to anyone, but they have to have the video link in order to um, get it. So you would provide your students, you'd put the link in Moodle, your students would click on it, they'd go see the video, but no one else could really get into it unless they were sort of randomly creating um, YouTube links which are, you know, already, you can see that's a little, I mean, you could use a random video creator, uh, random uh, string creator to come up with that, but really, I mean, uh, for the most part, that's going to be private enough to not have to worry about it. If you want it, if you want to absolutely be certain that no one ever besides just the students in your class can see this video, you can set it to private and then you actually enter in the email addresses of everyone that uh, is allowed to see this video. They get an email and then they have access to it. I find this a little cumbersome for classroom use and prefer, um, if, if I were to want something to be a little more private to do unlisted, why would I choose unlisted over public? For me personally, I don't care if other people watch my videos, but I do have a few videos for courses in which I used slide decks that came from another source and that, um, uh, you know, only later did I really think through the fact that while it's totally fine to use somebody else's slide deck in a classroom setting or in an enclosed 
uh, environment in which it's a, essentially a virtual classroom setting, uh, it, you can't have somebody else's copywritten materials publicly available. Uh, so I, I choose the unlisted when that's the case. When it's entirely my own stuff that I've completely created or in which the, the copyright uh, licensing says feel free to reuse this all you want, then I just set it at public. So I'm going to go ahead and go with unlisted and I'm going to actually in this case, I, I do want this one to be public, so I'll change that to public and publish. Regardless of whether you chose public or unlisted, this is the video link that you make available to your students. So I'm just going to, I could choose uh, to get what's called embed code. So embed code allows the video to just automatically play inside of a topic area or a page that you have created inside of Moodle, or I could just create the link which I could use the URL item or a label item to show that link. Either one is fine for our purposes. Um, I'm going to choose embed code, uh, and that's just this little bit of code right here, which I'm going to copy. This is kind of nice. If you only want them to see half of a video, you can say start at some other point in time. All right, copy and close that out. And now I close that out and my video is available here, I can now pop over into my Moodle site, turn my editing on. Had I chosen to just copy the link, I would now choose either label or URL and paste that link. I'm instead going to choose page because I did embed code. And in order to do that, that's this content, embed code is in HTML. So I'll click on the HTML button and then I'm going to paste, and there's that code I copied, update, and there it is. I save and return to course. So now it's as if the video is just right here. Bingo. And that, oh, there we go. And um, that is how you upload a video that you have created into YouTube and then embed it into Moodle for students to have access to.